Hey folks, Nathan here, and you wanna know something? You, yes you, viewers of this channel are amazing. I started this a few months ago not knowing what to expect, and now we have a community of over 2,000 people looking to learn a little bit more about Resolve. And as my way of saying thank you, here's a comprehensive breakdown of 10 features on the color page that would have saved me years. I've also broken the video up into segments, as you can see down here, if you wanna skip around and check out specific features. So open up Resolve, follow along, and by the end of this video, you'll be grading like a pro. So you may be familiar with highlight modes and how you can use it to, well, highlight things. And to show you what I mean, let's just qualify this wall here and then go into our highlight mode. And now you can see this is highlighted. And you actually have a few different modes up here top right of the viewer. So let's click on our black and white mode. And now this makes way more sense out of the matte finesse tools because if we try to clean up our white, you can see the white gets a bit cleaner. As we clean up our black, our black gets cleaner. So it makes a lot more sense and now we can just finesse this a little bit. And through adjusting the luminance, you can see we've gotten much closer there. Maybe we'll bring your saturation down a little bit. And then we notice we have quite a bit going on in our black here. We can just clean up our black and boom. Yeah, that's a pretty good, not too bad key. So that's pretty handy. And if we wanna see the colors again, we can just go back to our standard mode. And let's say we want to make this wall maybe a little bit darker. We can definitely do that and darken things up. I can just come out of highlight and we can see if I press control D, the before and the after. But if we go back into our highlight and we go into our AB, we can then see what area we're actually impacting and the changes we're making to it. So we made it darker, so you see it now, darker. If we make it brighter, you're gonna see it again, brighter. And this can have some really handy uses. So check this out. We're gonna go to the beginning of our shot here. Just gonna come out of highlight mode. And I'm gonna add a new node at the beginning with Shift S. And we're just gonna add some noise reduction here. So we're gonna come into our motion effects and add a bit of noise reduction. But first, we're gonna go to our highlight mode again with A, B. Now, as we increase our noise reduction, you actually see the specific pixels that we're blurring out with noise reduction. So that can be super handy. And I'm just going to delete this node. But I also find it useful if we go to the end here and let's just check things out. So if we actually look at our waveform down here, we can see that our shadows have a bit of a blue green tint to them and we can adjust that in our shadows over here in our log controls. So let's just try to clean that up a little bit. Okay, perfect. But the thing that you can use the AB mode for is you can see exactly what we're adjusting. So if we change our low range, we can then see exactly what we're grabbing and not just guess based on what's showing up on the waveform. So now we can bring our low range down or we can bring it up if we wanna impact more. But I just wanna get the darkest parts of the image and maybe adjust her hair a little bit there. Perfect. And now we can see the before and the after. So each mode is definitely useful in its own way, and you can actually view them all at once. If we right click on our viewer and then go down to show split screen, we can then go into our highlight modes, and now you see all of the modes at once. So it can be super useful to have all that info up there at once, and going between nodes, you can see the different things that you are impacting. And if you want to turn it off, you can actually just turn off our split screen and boom, back to normal. <laughs> One thing about Resolve is that it has great keyboard customization options. We can go up here, top left, and go down to keyboard customization, or you can hit Control, Alt, and K to bring up your customization options. And it has a few ways for you to discover what shortcuts are already built into Resolve. So you have this virtual keyboard here, and if you click on any of the keys, it tells you exactly what it does. You also have your modifiers, so if you hit Alt S, you add a serial node. Or if you hit, let's say, Control S, well, that saves the project. And you can also come over here to All Commands, and if we hit Search, so let's search, I don't know, Still. So now we have a few options. We'll go down to View, maybe in Stills here, and we see, ah, we can grab a Still with hitting Control, Alt, and G. So I personally find I use this feature quite a bit. So I wanna make it a little bit easier to access. So let's go to our control modifier here. And if we look at our keyboard, we can see keys that are not currently in use. We're gonna use C. Now we can overwrite the shortcut by clicking in here, but we can add a new shortcut by adding our plus. And we're just gonna add in C. And now whenever we press C, we will grab a still. We can then save this and name your preset to whatever you want. And then press okay. Now we can close out of here 
And if we want to grab that still, we just hit C on our keyboard and boom, we now have our still and you can see it right here. And we can bring up our customization again with Control Alt K and you can go through for days checking all the options that are available on the keyboard or searching things out in this handy tab over here to make the program faster to use and maybe discover some features that you didn't even know existed. Sometimes it can be helpful to see the specific color or luminance level of an area. And one tool you can use for this is your waveform. So as we play through the clip and we see things changing, we see that change occur in our waveform. So one way we can isolate this is if we go into our power windows, we can just draw something out and let's go over his face here. Yeah, we're just gonna draw a square over his face. And now if we go into our highlight mode, we see the waveform for just that one particular section of the shot. And as we go through the shot, we can see it change. And if we wanna change the positioning, we just go into our power window tool and then we can move it around. Now that's pretty easy, but there's an easier way. Let's go out of our highlight mode and just reset this node. We're then gonna go into our scope settings and go down to display qualifier focus. And now if we go to our tools and select our qualifier, anything that we hover over top of, it now shows us that area on our waveform. So let's say if we go into our skin here, it sits around this area, maybe the briefcase, it's much darker around here, part of the hair that's really bright. You get the idea and it shows the red, green, and blue values right there on your scopes. And it also works for your other scopes. Like let's say if we go into the vector scope, again, it shows you where you are on your scopes. So this can be really helpful for quick reference checks if you wanna see where you're sitting on a shot and maybe if you make some adjustments to that shot. Let's just make some adjustments here. You can then highlight specific areas and quickly see where they sit along your waveform. So next, we have the white balance eyedropper tool, which is one of the automatic adjustments inside of Resolve. And what it does is if you click on something that you think is supposed to be white, it will make adjustments to your shot and changing your temperature and your tint to make that area white. And that's all fine and dandy. But what I like to use it for is to display my red, green, and blue values numerically, going from zero at the darkest up to 256 at the brightest point. So to break down what's going on here a little bit better, we need to talk about the RGB channels and bit depth. So a bit is a way that computers store information. It can be either a one or a zero. So if you have one bit, you have two possible outcomes. And if you have two bits, then you have four possible outcomes. So the number of possible outcomes boils down to two to the power of how many bits you have. So if you have eight bits, that's 256 possible combinations. So with 8-bit video, you have 256 possible combinations for each channel, for the red, green, and blue channels. And those shades interact with each other to give you the specific colors and brightness levels that you see on your screen. As each pixel is actually made up of three sub-pixels, a red, a green, and a blue. And the specific color and brightness that you see for that pixel is based upon those three sub-pixels. So if, let's say they're all at zero except for the red channel, well then you'd have absolute red and the same goes for the green and blue channels. So as we see that on display with our white balance eyedropper tool, you can actually see that what is supposed to be white, so if we click on this here, they will all be the same number pretty much, but that's not just for white. If the red, green, and blue values are all the same, then it means you have no color for that particular pixel. We can see that it's coming in a little bit purple with our green channel being lower than our red and our blue channels. And we can also see that down here in our scopes. So using your white balance eyedropper tool is an easy way to be able to tell what specific red, green, and blue values you have. And instead of looking at your scopes and getting an approximate value, you know exactly what the values are for that particular area that you're over top of. But before we move on to the next tip, let's say you always wanna see those RGB values. Well, you just right click and click show picker RGB value. And now whenever you're on your qualifier tool, you always have those values up there. So we have this corrected shot here and I'm just gonna pause on kind of a hero frame. So we've corrected the shot, just adjusting the contrast, a little bit of the color temperature and some exposure adjustments and you can see the before and the after, but that's not what we're on about. We're gonna add new node with Alt S and then we're gonna add a bit of a creative look. Now I like to do this easily in my colors, go down to printer light hotkeys. Now I'll just go into my primary bars to easily show you what I'm doing, but I'm just using the number pads on my keyboard to adjust my red, green and blue channels. 
So I press four to bring my red channel down and nine to bring my blue channel up. And yeah, that gets me kind of the look that I want. I'm then just gonna quickly balance out my shadows and bring down my low range a scooch. So this is a pretty cool look, but I'm not 100% about it. I wanna do a little bit of testing. Now I could reset my node and then try over again to try something else, or I could just add a new node and then disable this node and then back and forth between the two looks. But a super easy way to do this, just gonna delete this node here. We can go in and right click on our clip and you see over here versions. Let's just name this current version we're using. So we're gonna rename it and you can name it to whatever you want. And then if we right click again, you see local versions, we can create a new version and name that whatever you want. Now we have two different versions. Now if I right click, you can see our two different versions, BW and Cyan, so we're on BW. What we can do is we can reset our node grade here. So let's just make it black and white like the name suggests. Gonna go into an RGB mixer, come down to monochrome and boom, simple black and white. And now we can switch between our two versions. If we go up here to Cyan, load that up. We now have our Cyan and we go back to BW, we can load that up and now we have our black and white look. And if you wanna be even quicker about it, you can use your shortcut. So control B to switch between your different versions and control Y to add a new version. And let's add another look. We can reset our node, go into our primaries and let's make it kind of yellow and golden. So we're just gonna bring down our blue a bit and maybe bring up our green a scooch and balance out our shadows just a little bit there. And again, we can just rename that by right clicking on our clip, go in and rename and name that whatever you want. And then you can switch between all your different versions by hitting Control B on your keyboard and you have your different looks. You can also see them all at once if we right click and then go into split screen and then go down here to version. Now we have our multiple different versions up on screen. And if you wanna start working on one, you can just click away and then make adjustments and you can see them all at the same time playing through the shot. So that's all fine and dandy, but what if you need to send these multiple versions to someone to review? Well, there's an easy way to do that. We're gonna come into our deliver page. So it doesn't matter which settings you use. I'm just gonna go into H.264 master, come down to individual clips and go into file. Now, if we scroll all the way down here, we can see use commercial workflow. And that allows us to render out our multiple versions all at the same time. And you can add whatever file naming structure you want to add in here. And then you just pick a location. And we just select our folder. We can add a name. Then you're good to add to render queue and then start your render. And it's gonna render out your multiple different versions. And you can see your versions right here. So this is the first one here. Okay, great. And then the other ones are in these other folders and boom, that's our yellow look. And if we go back again, we got our black and white look. And then we can just grab everything and send it off to our client for review. So it's really easy working with versions. So while on the color page and something's in the viewer, you can always right click on it and click grab still. Now, what exactly does that do? Well, if we go into our gallery, we can see that we now have a picture of this actual shot here and we have these numbers, one, one, one. So what does this refer to? Let me bring up our timeline here so we can see our shots in order. So we did a still of this shot. It's on video track number one. It is the first clip in the timeline and it is version number one. So if we go over to, let's say this clip here, we then right click, grab still, you can see it's now one, two, one, cause it's the second clip in the timeline. And if we left click below the clip, you actually see we get the option to add a name to it. And you can label them whatever you want to help keep things organized. You can also use automatic labeling. The way we do that, we're gonna to go to our project settings. We're gonna go down here to general options. You then see in the color portion, we have automatically label gallery stills using whatever you want. If you want it to be the clip name, clip version name, whatever you want to use to automatically name it. So we're gonna go by clip name. And now we can go over to another still here. We can right click, click grab still. And now it has this name associated with it, which I don't really have a clip name associated with this shot, but it could be helpful for whatever system you're using. Now, what is the point of having these stills? Well, what we can do is we can right click on the still and we can actually export it. And this allows us to send it off to people and we can pick whatever file type we want. Let's go with a JPEG and we can name that and then hit export. And then if you check in File Explorer here, you see we have our shot, but we also have a DRX file. And what the DRX file is, it actually has the node tree information for DaVinci Resolve. So check this out. So if we right click on our still, we can then click display node graph, and it actually has the node graph used for that particular still. And this can be super useful if you actually wanna apply the look that was used on this still on whatever clip you're currently working on. 
So we can right click and hit apply grade. And now we have this new grade applied to this clip here. And we can undo that with control Z, but you don't have to grab a clip specific node graph in your still. You can also grab a group node graph. So if we come over here to one of our group node graphs, we can then right click on our frame, grab a still. And as you see here, it now has post applied to it because it's the group post clip. And if we display the node graph, we can see that that is indeed the node graph for the post clip. Now we've been applying everything to the stills folder, which is only available in this one project. But if we go over to our power grade folder, we then right click, grab our still, we now have it in our power grades folder, which is available through multiple projects in Resolve. So if you have a particular look or reference image that you wanna bring over to another project, you can easily do that using your power grades folder. And because stills are the gift that keep on giving, you can actually do more. Let's go back into our stills folder and let's say we wanna match this shoulder shot with this shot here. Well, we can double click it. And now we have this split view brought up where we have this shoulder shot here and this shot of him opening the briefcase. And as we move the image wipe across, you can see that having an impact on your waveform down here. So it really helps you match and compare the two shots. And of course you can go through in a couple different ways. You can do a vertical wipe. You can do like a picture in picture thing and expand that out if you want. It's really all up to how you want to use the image wipe feature. I personally like to use it in a side by side mode so I can just view my image and get a good idea of how to match these shots and to compare them. And it's also great to have that info up there on the waveform. So stills are definitely a very robust tool inside of Resolve. So wiping an image is definitely a good way to help you match your shots, but what if you don't wanna search through a whole bunch of stills that you have to take and then you have to organize them? Well, there's an easier way. So let's close our gallery and we're gonna open up our clips. We're then gonna go down to the clip that we want to wipe with and right click and go up to wipe timeline clip. And now we have this clip from the timeline as an image wipe without having to make a still. And we can see very easily that we obviously have some green color cast going on in this image here. So we're just going to fix that. Yeah, that's a much closer match now. So it's just that easy. But one downside of using still images as references is that, well, they don't move. It's just a still image. And what if something changes in the frame and you want a reference to that? Well, we're gonna come into image wipe. We're then gonna right click on our image and then go down to split screen. We're gonna go down to neighbor clips. Now we have the neighboring clips. We have the before, the current, and the after. And it can be really useful to again, help see just some quick visual differences. So looking here, we can tell that this shot is clearly more yellow than the two shots that precede it. So we can just adjust that quickly here and maybe throw in a little bit of green and boom, easy match. But with this four up display, you don't really get anything super useful on your waveform here as it goes from left to right for everything that's seen here. So you can't really make sense of it. So to fix that, we can actually just go in, let's select two clips. We're then gonna right click and go down to split screen again, and then go down to selected clips. Now we have the two clips up and you can watch them play in real time. And you also get something useful on your waveform. So it helps you match your shots. <laughs> So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, groups are my favorite feature in Resolve and I find myself using them all the time. And it's great in a situation like this. So you see we have these multiple shots of him at this briefcase here, just kind of opening it up and checking things out. And it's a corrected shot. So if we see the before and the after, all we're doing is just doing some temperature adjustments, a little bit of contrast and a little bit of exposure control. And we wanna get a general look for this piece. So let's just create that right now. We're gonna add a new node with Alt S and then create our look in our offsets. And I just do that through going into color and printer light hotkeys here. I'll go into my primary bar so you can see what I'm doing using my number pad. And we're just gonna make that a little more yellow, kind of golden. And then I wanna add a little bit of purple into my gamma just to clean that up a little bit. Yeah, that helps the skin. And then we're just gonna crank down this mid-tone detail a bunch here. And we can add a new note again with Alt S. And I just wanna clean up my shadows to make the bottom of this briefcase here look nice and black. Yeah, that's much better. And we can bring down our shadows a little bit too. So now we have a nice summary kind of look for this shot. And if we want to copy it to other shots, I guess we could go into our clips here and then select multiple clips by holding down control 
right click and go into apply grade, but there's an easier way to do it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select all the clips of him in front of the briefcase here. We're then gonna right click and add into new group. And you can name it whatever you want and select okay. And now we see this little green symbol down in the right hand corner of these clips that are all in the same group. And if you look up over here, we actually have multiple options now. So we have our group pre-clip, our clip, and our group post-clip. And you can also select those through this drop-down menu over here. So now I'm gonna grab that look that I created at the clip level, and I'm just going to Control C and Control V over here, and then again, Control C, and add a new node with Alt S and Control V, and now we can delete everything at the clip level. And we now have this at the group post level. And if we go over to our other shots, it is also being applied. So now if we make any adjustments, let's just go crazy and make it super bright, it now affects all the other clips in the group. And we can just undo that with Control Z. And if you have to do any balancing for each particular shot, then you can just go into your clip level and make any adjustments that you may need to make. And it doesn't carry over to the other clips in the group. It's only the group post clip and the group pre clip that carry over. And speaking of the group pre clip, that's a great spot if you wanna add some noise reduction or something like that something that you want to happen before everything else, the group pre-clip is the best spot for that. And of course you can have multiple groups. So if we go to this over the shoulder shot, it has its own group. And we can check it out if we right click on our clip and then go up here to groups and we see shoulder shot in here. So the look is again applied in the group post clip, but we also have this shot in here, which kind of works in this group, but it's so different from the other shots that it may actually be beneficial to take it out of the group. So what we can do is we can right click and go into remove from group but we wanna actually keep the look and just adjust it. So we go to collapse group grades. So anything that was in your group pre-clip would go here. Now we just had an empty node, so we can delete that. And anything that's on your post clip, which was what we have here. And then we can make the adjustments that we wanna make to fit this specific clip without getting rid of everything that we worked for. And if we decide that this shot would work great in another group, we can right click, go into groups, and then go over to shoulder shot, or actually let's go with case face and assign that to group. And now we have that specific look on the shot. And you can have as many groups as you want, but it's important to note that a clip can only be in one group. It cannot be in multiple groups. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So this will definitely help you save a ton of time when trying to create a specific look for certain scenes in whatever you're grading. Because you can affect every shot in the group so quickly. So let's say we actually want to go with a more blue look, then we can just make that adjustment. And now the new look is applied to everything else in a matter of seconds. And at the director sides, they don't like it and you want to change it to something else, well then you can just go in and yeah, sure, something like maybe this looks good. And boom, everything is done in seconds so you can save time and maybe even get a good night's sleep. So let's say you have an edited video that's all graded and you want to add one effect on top of everything. But the problem is you have like over a hundred shots. Well, how do you do that quickly? Now you may want to go into the edit page, then go into your effects, grab an adjustment clip, and then drag it out over top, and then apply your effect in here. But this is a video about the color page. So here's how we do it all in the color page. We're gonna come up here to our clip node tree, and then we're gonna to switch to our timeline node tree. Now we don't have any groups in effect, so it is smaller, but you can switch between these two dots up here. Now with our timeline node tree, this is affecting everything on the timeline. So we can add a new node with Alt S. So let's go ahead and do our open effects. And let's say we just wanna add a little bit of maybe some film grain. So we can drag that on top and let's just crank it up just so we can see it a bit better there. So now we have our film grain on top of our entire timeline. That's a little extreme, but you get the general idea. So it can make things super easy if you wanna add an effect on top of everything and stay within the color page. So one of the keys to working fast and efficiently is organization. And well, the clips tab in the color page is super useful for this because you can actually organize clips based on specific things. So let's go by groups. And let's check out our school exterior. Now we only have our school exterior shots up, but let's go one step further. Let's go back to all clips and we're gonna go into the light box feature. 
Now we have all the same filtering options, but laid out a little bit nicer in a more digestible way. And we can make the thumbnails bigger, and it actually acts as a good reference to kind of go through the shots and just see a quick color matching of how everything works. And if you select a shot and then kind of drag your cursor through it, you can see the movement of that shot. And if you want, you have access to your color controls in here, but you cannot see your node tree graph. To get that, you have to come out of Lightbox and now we can see our node tree again. Going back into Lightbox, we can see some of the other filtering options and let's go to ungraded clips. Oh, well, it looks like we missed a clip here. Now we can go back to all clips and we can see it kind of in this sequence here. So to quickly fix this, we can right click, hit apply grade, because it looks like a pretty similar shot. And it seems like it's in a group. So actually let's add it into our bed face group and assign a group and boom, now that's done. And we have no more ungraded clips aside from these little logos here. So we can hide our color controls here. And another thing we can do is actually go through specific keywords. So let's say we wanna look at all the exterior shots here. Now, none of those are tied to specific groups, but if we go into our keywords, oh, well, we have metadata for exterior, and now we have all of our exterior shots. And you can add more metadata actually easily in your edit page. So let's go over to a clip and let's go over to, yeah, this one here of her sewing. We're then gonna click on our clip and then go into our metadata. Now right off the bat, you typically have your clip details up, but we actually wanna go into shot and scene. And now we can add keywords and even identify specific people. So for this, let's go with sewing. Now, if we go back into our color page, we can then filter by sewing and we can see all of our sewing shots. And the same would go with people or whatever other metadata you wanna add. So another helpful thing you can do is filter by specific effect. So let's say we go down here to noise reduction. We now see we have a couple clips. We're gonna go into our color controls and we can see the noise reduction for each particular clip. And noise reduction is one of those effects that's well known to be very processor intensive. So you can apply noise reduction and then render a cache, but any adjustment you make, it's gonna have to re-render the cache. So what a lot of folks end up doing is actually just keep that node turned off until the very end. And then you can easily use this filter to see which nodes you have to turn back on again. So if we come into Lightbox, we can see that noise reduction is turned off in the clip. Now we can obviously adjust it here, but we can also go to another clip and actually just adjust it directly from Lightbox. We're just gonna hit Control D and you can see that change on the waveform. And if we go in, we can see it is now applied. We can do that again and see the difference that it makes on the waveform so we know that we're definitely applying our noise reduction. And now we're good to go back to all our clips and we'll bring everything into the liver page and give our final product. And there it is, 10 features in the color page resolve that would have saved me years. And if you stuck along this far, why not hit the like button and maybe get subscribed for more videos like this. I put out new Resolve tutorials every single week and I'd love to see you in the next one. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.